Hi. In this episode of How We Got Here, we're going to look at the history of Mother's Day. After the Civil War, abolitionist Julia Ward Howe, writer of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, led a Mother's Day for Peace in New York on June 2nd of 1872 to promote peace, national healing, and reconciliation. She composed a proclamation to appeal to womanhood throughout the world. Julia Ward Howe personally sponsored a Mother's Day celebration in Boston for the next 10 years till interest dwindled. In the following decades, Protestant churches and schools observed Decision Day for committing to Christ, Roll Call Day for church membership, Missionary Day, Temperance Sunday for against uh, alcohol for prohibition, a Children's Day. Numerous efforts arose for observing Mother's Day. A suggestion for honoring motherhood was made by University of Notre Dame's first athletic director, Frank Hearing. In 1904, Frank Hearing observed a Notre Dame professor passing out penny postcards to students with the instructions of write anything, anything, as long as it's to their mothers. We do this every month in this class. One day a month is Mother's Day. Frank Herring proposed setting aside one day in a year for a nationwide memorial to the memories of mothers and motherhood. Stating throughout history, the great men of the world have given their credit for their achievements to their mothers. The Holy Church recognizes this, as does Notre Dame. Taking the day from a suggestion to reality was Anna Jarvis. She is the person most responsible for making Mother's Day a nationally observed event. Anna Jarvis was from Grafton, West Virginia, the granddaughter of a Baptist minister. She was a member of Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church, where she taught Sunday school. In 1876, after one of her Bible lessons, Anna Jarvis closed with a prayer. I hope and pray that someone sometime will found a memorial Mother's Day commemorating her for the matchless service she renders to humanity in every field of life. She is entitled to it. Similar to Clara Barton, founder of the American Red Cross, Anna Jarvis's mother worked during the Civil War to organize Mother's Day work clubs to care for wounded soldiers, both Union and Confederate. Anna Jarvis's mother raised money for medicine, inspected bottled milk, and improved sanitation. She arranged in 1868 a Mother's Friendship Day to reunite families that had been divided during the Civil War. She hired women to care for families where mothers suffered from tuberculosis. Inspired by her mother's self-sacrifice, Anna Jarvis wanted to honor her and all mothers. On May 12, 1907, Anna persuaded her church, Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church, to have a small Mother's Day service. The church then agreed to set aside every year the second Sunday in May, the anniversary of her mother's death, as a day to show appreciation to all mothers, the makers of the home. The next year, May 10, 1908, Anna organized a Mother's Day in two places, Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church, where she went, sent a telegram, and in Philadelphia, where she gave a moving speech in the auditorium of the 12-story Wanamaker department store. John Wanamaker was a retail pioneer and founder of one of the first department stores in the world. Wanamaker who had paintings of Christ throughout his store, stated, there is a power in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep uppermost the profound conviction that it is the gospel that is to win the heart and convert the world. The things that were sweet dreams in our childhood are now being worked out. The procession is being made longer and longer. The letters of Christ's name are becoming larger and larger. Well, with the financial backing of John Wanamaker and H.J. Heinz, 
maker of the 57 varieties of Kadju, Anna Jarvis began a letter writing campaign to ministers and politicians across the nation to establish a national Mother's Day. Due to the overwhelming support of pastors and churches, by 1909, 45 states observed Mother's Day. People wore white and red carnations on Sunday to pay tribute to their mothers. On May 8th of 1914, Congress designated the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. On May 9th, 1914, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed the first national Mother's Day as a, quote, public expression of love and reverence for the mothers of our country. President Reagan said in his Mother's Day proclamation, 1986, a Jewish saying sums it up, God could not be everywhere, so he created mothers. English poet Robert Browning wrote, motherhood, all love begins and ends there. Mothers have the role of imparting values into children. As American poet William Ross Wallace wrote, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Dr. James Dobson addressed the National Religious Broadcasters February 16th of 2002. If they can get control of the children, they can change the whole culture in one generation. This was echoed by historians Will and Ariel Durant in Lessons of History, 1968. They wrote, civilization is not inherited. It has to be learned and earned by each generation anew. If the transmission should be interrupted, civilization would die and we would be savages again. On February 3rd, 1983, at the annual National Prayer Breakfast, President Ronald Reagan stated, I have a very special old Bible, and alongside a verse in the second book of Chronicles, there are some words, handwritten, very faded by now, and believe me, the person who wrote these words was an authority. Her name was Nell Wilson Reagan. She was my mother. Reagan stated, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in the United States when men were free. Quotes by unknown authors regarding Mother's Day are, Mothers hold their children's hands for a short while, but their hearts forever. Another quote, a mom's hug lasts long after she lets go. On Mother's Day, May 8th, 2020, President Donald J. Trump proclaimed, We celebrate the exceptional mothers in our lives whether they became mothers through birth, adoption, foster care, or other means, these women are deserving of our unending gratitude and praise this day and every day. The institution and wisdom passed from mother to child strengthens the fabric of our nation and preserves generations of wisdom and familial values. In our earliest days, our mothers provided us with love and nurturing. They often know our talents before we do, and they selflessly encourage us to use these God-given gifts to pursue our biggest dreams. I encourage all Americans to express their love and respect for their mothers, whether with us in person or in spirit, and to reflect on the importance of motherhood to the prosperity of our families communities, and nation. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 1.5, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Abraham Lincoln's mother, Nancy, 
died when he was nine years old. The Life of Abraham Lincoln, written by G. J. G. Holland, Springfield, Illinois, 1866, recorded Lincoln's father, Thomas, married Nancy Hanks in 1806. She took her, he took her to the humble cabin he had prepared for her. And within the first few years, few years of their married life, she bore him three children. The first was a daughter named Sarah who died. The third was a son, Thomas, who died in infancy. The second was Abraham, who born in the humblest abode under the humblest circumstances, under the blessing of a providence, which he always recognized. Mrs. Lincoln, the mother, was evidently a woman out of place among those primitive surroundings. She was five feet, five inches high, a slender, pale, sad and sensitive woman with much in her nature that was truly heroic. Holland continues in The Life of Abraham Lincoln, 1866. Those who knew the tender and reverent spirit of Abraham Lincoln later in life will not doubt that he returned to his cabin home deeply impressed by all that he had heard. It was the rounding up for him of the influences of a Christian mother's life and teaching. It recalled her sweet and patient example, her assiduous efforts to inspire him with pure and noble motives, her simple instructions in divine truth, her devoted love for him, and the motherly offices she had rendered him during all his tender years. His character was planted by this Christian mother's love. The life of Abraham Lincoln recounted Providence began at his mother's knee and ran like a thread of gold through all the inner experiences of his life. A great man never drew his infant life from a purer or more womanly bosom than her own. And Mr. Lincoln always looked back to her with an unspeakable affection. Long after her sensitive heart and weary hands had crumbled into dust, he said to a friend with tears in his eyes, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Lincoln wrote, I remember my mother's prayers and they have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of How We Got Here and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and God bless you. Thank uh-huh.